In 2019, a discriminatory trend began in Poland as municipalities across the country started declaring themselves as LGBT free zones, adopting resolutions against LGBT propaganda and having a stance that they call pro family. Within a year, a third of the country had designated itself an LGBT free zone. Almost 100 municipalities have adopted the resolutions, including five voivodeships, the largest administrative areas in Poland. Together they cover an area larger than the whole of Hungary. The European Union voted overwhelmingly to condemn the zones. I will not rest when it comes to building a union of equality. A union where you can be who you are and love who you want without fear and recrimination. Because being yourself is not your ideology, it is your identity, and no one can ever take it away. So I want to be crystal clear, LGBTQI free zones are humanity free zones, and they have no place in our union. But will the pressure from the EU be enough to force progressive change in Poland? I believe in the day. Children who need to be taught to respect traditional moral values are being taught that they have an inalienable right to be gay. It's really illogical. When you think about it, it's quite illogical to actually say, well, I'm gay and I'm into defending the gay community, but I don't care about anything else. It's ridiculous. It's important that if you're defending communities, that you also defend all communities, not just one. Hello, my name is Terry Reinke and I'm a Green Member of the European Parliament and also the Co-President of the LGBTI Intergroup uh, and my pronouns are she and her. On the 11th of March 2020, the European Parliament voted for a resolution that made the whole of the European Union, including Poland, an LGBT freedom zone. The resolution declares that LGBTQ persons everywhere in the EU should enjoy the freedom to live and publicly show their sexual orientation and gender identity without fear of intolerance, discrimination or persecution. This followed from the EU denying funding to areas in Poland that they had declared themselves LGBT free zones. Terry has been a progressive voice within the EU Parliament since she was first elected in 2014. She has done a lot of work fighting discrimination, including putting forward the Freedom Resolution. The idea of declaring the European Union an LGBTIQ freedom zone um, certainly came from the whole debate around LGBTI ideology free zones in Poland. Um, the week that we adopted this resolution um, actually marked the set anniversary of two years since the first municipality in Poland had declared itself such an LGBTI ideology free zone and obviously we wanted to, to counter that and to make sure um, that it's absolutely clear um, that also the fundamental rights of the LGBTI community should be safeguarded inside of the European Union. However, we obviously know that with this declaration, um, we do not immediately make this a reality for all um, queer people in Europe. Um, but we want to make this pledge, we want to make a promise as members of the European Parliament that we want to do everything possible to promote LGBTI rights inside of the European Union. I absolutely believe that raising awareness around the problem with um, hostility towards LGBTI people um, does make a difference, that um, we have to talk about it, we have to make declarations such as um, the European Parliament um, saying that our fundamental rights um, are like everybody else's fundamental rights to be respected um, and safeguarded. At the same time, obviously, um, we are aware of the fact that this is not immediately going to solve the problem of queer phobia uh, inside of the European Union. Um, but I think that this declaration as a first step, as a starting point also to debate with politicians, but also people from other societal fields um, about what we can do um, to fight against uh, queer phobia uh, in the EU and beyond, 
um, is important while on the other hand also coming up with very concrete actions what kind of legislation we need what kind of political measures we need um, to do more um, against the attacks on LGBTI rights all across the European Union. Well, we have seen that the campaign um, against so-called LGBTI ideology free zones um, has already brought about some change. So they're the first municipalities who had, declared, who had declared themselves as such and that are now taking it back. Um, and obviously I cannot look into the, um, the heads of the people who are um, voting on this, but when I speak to activists, some of them actually say that there are people in these local councils that have voted um, in favor of declaring themselves to be LGBTI ideology free and that have really changed their minds, that have understood that this is uh, discriminatory and problematic um, and that now want to do more to actually fight against discrimination um, of LGBTI people. So I'm hopeful that yes, there is a change and that might have had to do with explaining but it also uh, I'm sure had to do um, with putting pressure like for example sanctioning um, municipalities um, when they are not respecting fundamental rights of all citizens and that is why we believe that um, this respect for fundamental rights should be a conditionality um, for EU funding and um, EU um, funded projects um, all across um, the European Union. Earlier this year Narodziva, a town in southeast Poland, removed its status as an LGBT free zone after claiming the resolution had been misunderstood and exploited to harm the town's image. Many believe this U turn is down to the loss of funding from the EU. The mayor of Narodziva claimed criticisms of the town were fake news and that the declaration had no legal effect. With regards to what kind of effect this declaration of an LGBTIQ freedom zone from the European level uh, will have now, we are in contact with a number of um, cities um, that are looking at doing something um, similar and that have said that they were inspired by this, that they want to send a message to the community um, in their cities um, that this is their home and that um, they will do everything to um, safeguard their rights, um, which I think is a good sign. But obviously we also want to go beyond um, declarations. So we really want to work on a set of what are political actions that are needed. And obviously we have our ideas. We have the LGBTIQ equality strategy coming from the European Commission, but we also really want to talk to the community and see what they need and what we would have to do um, to make their lives better and to um, make them enjoy full equality and freedom inside of the EU. When we look at the situation in Poland, it is not a completely isolated case, but it is certainly one of the most dramatic cases of rise in discrimination and also hatred um, towards the LGBTI community. And I believe that uh, on the one hand, um, we need to have very clear measures um, to stand up for fundamental rights and rule of law. Um, like for example the rule of law conditionality that we now have um, to um, yeah, basically say that if you are not upholding um, fundamental values of the European Union um, as a central government you cannot um, distribute EU funding anymore. Um, so this is one of the aspects. Then we also have infringement procedures if EU law is being broken in countries such as Poland. But I think we also need to have more enabling measures and one of the things that we have pushed for a lot in the European Parliament was to have a funding made available for human rights defenders also inside of the European Union because the people that are actually doing the work on the ground, the activists, the organizations, they need to be supported because they are going to be absolutely crucial um, if we want to move forward, if we want to stand up against this backlash and then have LGBTI rights enhanced and promoted. We know that our lives are still in danger, our rights restricted, our freedom brutally suffocated in far, far too many places in the European Union. But it is a step and we are many. We are everywhere and we are strong. If you want to stay updated about what is happening with regards to LGBTI rights inside of the European Union, definitely follow the intergroup. Um, we are across political groups and from all member states uh, organized inside of the European Parliament. We are more than 150 MEPs, so we are really big. And um, we try to do different things, both in parliamentary work, but also directly working with the community. 
um, to make the European Union a union of equality, freedom and diversity. Um, so do stay in touch with us if you have questions, um, if you want to have information about certain things, um, we are always there. Um, and I hope that with this declaration of making the European Union an LGBTIQ freedom zone, we can also take a first step um, to get in an even closer contact, uh, contact with the community um, because this is eventually why we are here for and um, to represent your needs and to fight for your political demands.